Practice test 3, page 86, section 2. Repeat sentence. You will hear some sentences. Please repeat each sentence exactly as you hear it. You will hear each sentence only once. You will be informed of the results by email. Please have copies of your seminar papers in the library a week in advance. Most students are not eligible to claim housing benefit. If you want to quit the student union, tell the registrar. Does the university have an ice hockey team? Without doubt, his primary motive was economic. The modern approach to the problem is to stress the symbolic side of human nature. Many privately owned firms have been eaten up by larger corporations.
I'm afraid Professor Jones doesn't suffer fools gladly. Most of these criticisms can be shown to be false. Practice Test 3, page 91, section 2. Retell lecture. You will hear a lecture. After listening to the lecture, please retell what you have just heard from the lecture in your own words. You will have 40 seconds to give your response. Lecture A. We appear to take it as a rule, or as a law of nature, that each species is adapted to the climate of its own home. For example, species from the Arctic, or even a temperate region, could not survive in a tropical climate, nor could a tropical species last long if it found itself at the South Pole. But it is true to say there's too much emphasis placed on the degree of adaptation of species to the climates where they live. We assume that this adaptation, if all species are descended from a single form, must have taken place over millions of years. Yet a large number of plants and animals brought from different countries remain perfectly healthy in their new home. Also, there are several examples of animal species that have extended their range, within historical times, from warmer to cooler latitudes and the other way round. Rats and mice provide good examples. They have been transported by man to many parts of the world and now have a far wider range than any other rodent and they can be found living in the cold climate of the Faroe Islands to the north, through the tropical zones to the Falklands in the south. 
It is possible to see adaptation to any climate as a quality that is part of an inborn flexibility of the physical and mental constitution of most animals. Therefore, the ability to survive in the most different climates by both man and his domestic animals, and the fact that elephants once existed in an ice age while living species live in tropical areas, should not be seen as deviations from the rule, but as examples of this flexibility being brought into action under particular circumstances. Lecture B Today I want to look at some research that has been done into what motivates people and um, particularly on what is called the mindset or more simply the mental attitude that highly motivated people have and of course the attitude of those who aren't so motivated or who lose their motivation. Now it's obvious that motivation is crucial to performance but that doesn't tell us where it comes from. Why is it that some people work hard and do well while others can work just as hard and don't? Why some are committed to what they are doing and others aren't? Finding answers to this question would be extremely useful to educators, as well as in other areas of life. Businesses, for example, have long believed that financial incentives, bonuses, perks, pay rises, are the great motivators. And to an extent, they can make a difference. But what we are calling the mindset is more important. What has made it difficult to find out what the causes of motivation are is that motivation and the capacity for hard work can be mistaken for talent, thinking it's a gift. Either you've got it or you haven't. <laughs> People who believe this have a fixed mindset and are not only going to perform less well than they could, but it's also an attitude that will affect their whole outlook on life. Some say that if talent is something people are born with and you're unlucky enough not to have any, then there's not much point in putting in all that extra effort for no real reward. However, research has shown that if you put in the hours, practice brings the same level of achievement as talent. It's a question of changing this fixed attitude and adopting a growth attitude, which includes seeing mistakes and failures as opportunities to improve. Lecture C I suppose that it has always been the case for the majority of us that the first test of a work of art or literature or music is how much pleasure it gives us and we don't want to bother with analysing why or how it has had such an emotional impact on us. It's always good to know what your pleasures are in the positive sense and not as easy as some people think as opposed to only really knowing what you don't like and complaining about it though presumably there's some kind of pleasure to be had from that too. But now that you've chosen to take a course on the novel, I'm afraid that evaluating literature on the basis of how you feel about a book won't count as an intelligent, critical response to the work being studied. It is, however, useful to remind yourselves from time to time that we all fall for trash every now and again. For instance, you might actually enjoy listening to a catchy pop song, but you'd find it hard to explain in critical terms that it is good or better than something else just because it is enjoyable. So, you're here to sharpen up your critical knives, as it were, among other things, of course. Practice Test 3, page 92, section 2. Answer short question. You will hear some questions. Please give a simple and short answer to each one. Often just one or a few words is enough. What is a painting of a person's head usually called? Where would you find an urban area? In a city or in the countryside? What do we call it when the moon completely blocks out the light from the sun? What point of the compass is directly opposite east? Where do you pay for your purchases at a supermarket? 
what do you call an apartment that is below ground level? A basement apartment or a penthouse apartment? What feature do pianos and computers have in common? If you are feeling fed up, is it a positive or a negative feeling? What do we call a period of 10 years? A specialist who repairs leaking water pipes is called a... Practice test 3, page 88, section 2. Describe image. Model answers. Image A. This graph shows how popular several new EU member states and other parts of the world have become among holidaymakers during the period 2003 to 2007. By far the greatest increase has been in visitors to Latvia, a number which grew by more than 1,100% during this time period. Slovakia and Poland showed the next largest increases, while China and Israel were at the bottom, showing a growth of about 160%. Image B This graph shows that there has been a steady decline in the readership of national daily newspapers in Britain during the period 1978 to 2009. The percentage of readers has declined by about 30%, which is roughly a fall in readership of 10% every 10 years. Image C. In the 10 years covered by the graph, overall sickness absence has fallen, though it remained higher in the public sector than in the private sector. In 2000, both private and public sector worker levels were above 3%, with public sector workers at a high of about 3.7 or 3.8% and private sector workers at about 3.2%. By the end of 2010, just above 3% of public sector employees were absent from work, compared with only slightly more than 2% of private sector employees. The gap between the two sectors was at its widest in the final quarter of 2008. So, on average, sickness rates are higher in the public than the private sector. Image D This graph shows e-security problems faced by businesses in the UK in 2001, 2003 and 2005. Virus infections and disruptive software remain the biggest problems in all the years covered, with 35% of businesses having such incidents in 2005, compared to 41% in 2001 and 50% in 2003. The next most common type of problem was staff misuse of information systems, rising from about 12% in 2001 to about 22% in 2003 and 21% in 2005. Unauthorized access by outsiders remained constant in 2003 and 2005 at about 16%, up on 2001's 13%. Finally, theft or fraud involving computers was at its highest in 2003, at about 12%, having risen from 6% in 2001 and then dropping to 8% in 2005. Image E. The graph compares expenditure per household between the countries of the UK and some specific regions of England. England as a whole is just above the average, while Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales spend less than the average. Wales spends the lowest, 
at almost 15% below the average, in contrast to the capital, London, at over 15% above the national average, making it the biggest spender. Apart from London, South East and East England, the rest of the country spend below average. Image F The picture shows a view of a city, possibly taken from a hill or a very tall building. In the foreground, there are many small, low buildings. It might be a slum area where very poor people live. In the background, you can see skyscrapers, which may house wealthier people, or it may be a business district. It could be in South America, but could be anywhere, really, where poor people come to the cities looking for work and a better life. Practice Test 3, page 91, section 2. Retell Lecture. Model Answers. Lecture A. The lecturer questions the idea that species are so perfectly adapted to the climate and environment they inhabit that they cannot be moved to another set of conditions and survive. The main argument is that species are more adaptable than we think. Using rats as an example of adaptability to show both plants and animals can survive a change of climate and environment. Lecture B The subject is motivation and success, and how an understanding of what it is would benefit both business and education. Incentives are not the answer, because it is a mental attitude that involves being prepared to work hard and above all learn from mistakes. Nor is it a question of talent, since those who are gifted also need to put in the hours to develop their talent. In fact, hard work can outdo talent. Lecture C The speaker says that while it is good to know what our likes and dislikes are, and when you are studying literature, the fact that you like a book is not a good criterion for judging it as literature. Saying you like or dislike a work, whether it's music or art or literature, is not valid or useful criticism.